hair loss or more specifically the medications used to treat hair loss now in this video i'm not really going to be covering things like prp hair transplants or so although those are very good ways to treat hair loss let's talk about medications the medications that we're interested in today are minoxidil and finasteride the two most widely available widely used and most effective medications for hair loss on the market at the moment let's first go for minoxidil and then we'll touch on finasteride a bit later minoxidil how does it work what does it do minoxidil is a medicine usually used as a topical solution which means you put it directly on the skin in the form of a spray a shampoo or cream or there are other forms but you put them on the skin directly what does it do it absorbs into the skin goes towards the blood vessels and it causes widening of those blood vessels in that area when you widen the blood vessels you increase the flow of blood to that area and when it comes to hair follicles they love more blood they want more blood flow because it means more nutrients more vitamins for that hair to grow so by widening blood vessels it does lead to an increase in hair growth in that area the results from minoxidil typically take around 8 to 16 weeks to begin showing new hair growth and after about 12 months 52 percent of people that use it report increased hair density and length so it is quite effective now let's talk a little bit about finasteride finasteride doesn't work the same way that minoxidil works what it does it actually blocks a hormone called dihydrotestosterone this is a specific form of testosterone but is more highly active and is actually the form of testosterone that leads to the majority of what we call androgenic alopecia or testosterone caused hair loss this is why men get a lot more hair loss than women do because of higher levels of dht or dihydrotestosterone what finasteride does which is taken as an oral tablet is it blocks or reduces the levels of dihydrotestosterone within your body and over time this leads to less of an effect on the hair follicles which allows them to regrow both thicker and longer and create more numerous hair follicles in that area. These medications can be used together. So minoxidil is best used as a topical solution, as something to put directly on the skin in the area you wanted to treat. Finasteride works way more effectively when it's used as an oral tablet. So taking it by the mouth and swallowing the medication it would work much better that way. Using both together, so topical minoxidil with oral finasteride leads to far better results. But they are both forms of preventative medicine. They're not curative. So if you're completely bald with no hair at all, then using minoxidil and finasteride is not going to make much of a difference, but it is preventative. The ideal candidate for people using this medication is going to be the people that have thinning hair. The hair is not completely gone, it's just a lot more thin because both of these medications, they need something to save. They try and prevent further hair loss, which allows hair to regrow. It's far better to use them early on in the hair loss journey to prevent further hair loss. Once you have gone completely bald, then the only way to really put hair back in that area is going to be a transplant. It's a form of preventative medicine, meaning start it early when you notice the problem coming and you'll get far better results than trying to start it a bit too late where it might not be as effective. I mean, how do you actually use it? Well, minoxidil is used very easily. Usually it comes in a form of a spray or a shampoo. Shampoo is super easy. Just use it like a normal shampoo. The only difference is you have to let it sit on your head for a few minutes before you wash it off. The spray is even easier. You'd simply take the spray, spray it into the area where you want it. So let's take me as an example. I am struggling a little bit with the hair being thinned. You can see this area is quite thin for my hairline. I would spray that minoxidil directly onto that area and then using my finger, just rub it down so it sits directly on the surface of the skin and gets absorbed in and then start doing its effects. As long as it's the right level, it should be around at least 5% minoxidil, but you can typically go up to 10% minoxidil. As long as it's that sort of strength, any form that you use it is going to have the same effect. Something to keep in mind is that minoxidil does come as a tablet, but that tablet is not used for hair loss. That tablet is actually used to deal with high blood pressure. Because remember I said earlier that minoxidil, what it does is it widens blood vessels. And when you widen a blood vessel, you can reduce the pressure inside of that blood vessel as well as improving blood flow. So for people with really high blood pressure or hypertension, minoxidil is a medication that is actually licensed for use in those people. But taking it as a tablet is not going to grow your hair. The dosage of finasteride needed to grow hair is typically one milligram. And you take this once per day as a tablet, usually early in the morning, it's very simple to do. As long as you get into this routine with both these medications, you are going to expect some far better hair growth to occur. Minoxidil takes around 8 to 16 weeks to start showing hair growth and you have to carry on using minoxidil for several years to really lock in that effect. Results using finasteride typically take around 3 to 6 months to start appearing and the same deal as minoxidil is you have to take them for several years to actually get anywhere. This is because as you grow older, your hair will start to try and go away and so you do have to kind of block this effect. Now let's talk a little bit about side effects because every medication does have side effects even your good old paracetamol 
can be dangerous if taken the wrong way. So minoxidil, when used topically, which is means on the skin directly, can have certain localized side effects. Usually this leads to dryness, skin irritation, inflammation in the area, and can possibly cause headaches as a side effect of widening those blood vessels. Otherwise, it's usually very well tolerated and perfectly safe to use. Finasteride has a bit more to it. So because finasteride blocks DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone, sometimes people can react to this and feel the symptoms of low testosterone. This would be a decreased libido or sexual activity, low mood and low energy. These side effects usually go away if you stop using the medication. So there is a bit of a question about how long do you have to use these things? And typically most people have to use them for several years. And I'll give you an analogy, for example, that can help explain it. Let's say you want to go to the gym and you're trying to increase the strength of your muscles. Let's take one muscle, let's take the biceps, for example. Let's say every few days you go to the gym and you're always doing a bicep workout. Very quickly, you will gain mass and strength in that muscle. However, let's say you do that for a few months, you've gained all this mass and strength, and then you stop going to the gym. Well, what will happen is you will lose some mass and you will lose some strength in that muscle. But compared to where you were at the beginning of the regimen, you will still remain at a higher level a higher baseline level compared to the start. So let's say you started here as you trained, became this strong and this big, and as you stopped training, you came down to here. This is still higher than where you started. And that's a good analogy for explaining how minoxidil and finasteride work. The more you take them, the longer you take them, you will maintain this hair growth. When you stop taking them, you will lose some hair growth and some hair will be lost, but you'll still be at a better state and a better starting position than where you were previously. So let's talk about where to get them. Minoxidil is available online in several different forms. You can buy as a shampoo, as a cream, as a spray by itself. You need to be careful about the brand and the manufacturer. Because it's not a prescription medication, you can run into quality issues as well as finasteride does require a prescription at least in the UK to be issued for the purpose of hair loss. If you're looking for a finasteride prescription for hair loss or you're looking for minoxidil that you can trust as being good quality then you know where to go. Go to our website royalwolfclinic.co.uk or message myself DM me here or call the phone number down in the description below and we will make sure we'll get this stuff sorted for you.